Welcome to my channel, my name is Brian. This video is going to be about assembling a compact metal bender and mounting it to the concrete floor. First thing you do is open the box up, start getting the pieces out, see what we got. First piece is, is a stand. Standing arm. At the base. And the bending dies. Bag full of round bending dies. And I guess this is extension for the handle. Although this isn't a Harbor Freight unit, it's very similar to the Harbor Freight. There's appears to be no instructions on how to put this together in the box or anywhere else. So let's figure it out. Pins, bolts, the dies, the pin, block. I guess this is all the hardware that I'll need to put it, actually put it together because this is anything left I can see. All these bolts on the tray. I have everything unpacked, ready to put together, so just place this up to here, line up the hole, put this screw, the screw, and this bolt lines up right in there. Just start these nuts on the back. Oh, no. it's ready to ready to bolt down that stuff fits in there I have the bender positioned in the location I wanted and I took a sharpie and I marked the holes where I wanted it. Mark, drilling the holes, I usually start with a real small bit to make a pilot because once you get the bigger rotary uh, drill, it wants to walk occasionally so this makes it so that you can get precisely where you want it. Drilled. 
I have my four pilot holes drilled. I want to take the big rotary drill and finish up to the size I need for the inserts. The insert that I'm using is a 3 8 16 insert. You can get these from McMaster Car. I like using these because this basically makes a, a flush finish when you're done. If you want to move the machine, it's more or less flush. I misplaced the tool that I normally use to install this. So I'm going to take and use a socket in its place to set them in. The way this works, it has a taper piece goes in and that expands out this piece of lead or some kind of soft metal and just place it in there have to get started drive it in and as you put the bolt in to tighten it it keeps pulling this up to make it stronger The bender's ready to put mount down to the floor. Now that I have it secured to the floor, I'm going to start putting these guys on the holder where they go. Is there, I think. I forgot that piece. And this, I think, goes here. That square block should go there. I'm just going to put this here. And I'll then just set the pins in wherever. Now I need to come back and I'm not sure what this piece is for. Uh, that looks like for there. I'm thinking this is some type of gauge or something. I don't know what this these pieces here do. I know this is probably like a stop and this is some type of piece. I don't know. So there was no instruction so you realize this piece but I think that does go there. I think. Not positive. I found this piece in the bag with the dies. So I think from some of the other units I've seen, this goes through in here. And this little spacer that was there goes on the bottom here. And then that gets tightened up together. That makes the most sense to me. Then that's, that stops the C from 
expanding. You're bending and keeps the C in the right position. I downloaded the instruction manual from Harbor Freight and they show this as a stop plate, but my tool didn't have the bolt that goes through here and you can set this so that when you're going around, it'll, it'll stop. Uh, right now I have it set up just to bend this old screw that I have, um, basically. So I'm gonna try to see how it does bending this thing. Too good, it must have been hard to harden the screw. It cracked it. Bend just with a little small piece of rod, just try to bend a 90 on it. A little overshot on the 90, but this machine will do exactly what I want to do because mainly I'm going to be bending rods just about the size of this, maybe a little bit larger. The handle did not have any type of pin to keep it from sliding in and out, so I'm just going to use one of these hitch pins you get in my tractor supply. And I'm going to drill a hole about an inch back here when the handle's closed, and I'm going to pull it out about halfway, drill another hole, and then bring it in. Probably so this is in about two inches. So that's an inch back, drill a hole into that to make it so the handle will stay. Get the hole centered on the handle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the jaw opening and then divide it by two to determine where my center is going to be. So I'll center that up to where it needs to be. And then lock in the hold downs for the vise so it don't move. For the first hole, I'm going to drill a pilot and I'll go to the The pilot hole done, now I'm going to switch off and do the next size for the finish size. I have the final drill size chucked in. I'm going to drill that hole real quick. Determine the final hole and then I'll mark the next one for the middle. I guess I'll put one in the middle while I'm here. I'm going to come back two inches and that's where the handle will be stopping at, right at the two inch mark. And get this. 
straight up and down from the last one. I'm not going to have a pilot. I'm just going to drill right through. For the final hole, I'm just going to put it about midway, so I'm going to guess that I'll bring the handle in about, let's just say, I'll come into right where that's six inches right there. I don't want to go into these. I line it up back up again, it's vertical. Put a little fluid on there. Okay, that gives me all the holes and for the to retain the extension handle. I want to have a place to store my handle when I'm not using it. So what I'm planning to do is to mount it right here. So I have basically a three eighths inch bolt and a three eighths inch crimp sir. So that way I don't have to weld anything. I'm just going to drill a 17 30 seconds inch hole in here and start this nut sir in and then I can just thread this bolt in and I have a convenient place to put my handle so it's not in the way. Now I'm going to install this pin nut. I have just a piece of steel that I'm going to use to give them a place to keep the pin nut from spinning. And I'll run this through a couple of threads past the end and then place that in. Get it flush. Plan is to keep the Allen wrench stationary. A little difficulty and some scratches. I got it set. Okay, now the handle has a place to be stored when not in use. Overall, I'm satisfied with this machine. The only thing that I saw I didn't like too much was the, the pins. They measure just a little bit larger than 9 16 and the holes measure a little bit more than 5 8 So I'm not sure why these pins, they didn't use 5 8 inch round stock, but most likely I'll eventually make these pins, maybe a little bit, make them 5 eighths like they should be. The other thing is the machine did not come with any instructions. So when I was putting it together, I didn't realize this piece belonged here. 
So I went to uh, Harbor Freight's website and I found the instructions for their bender and I downloaded that and printed it. And now I have a decent set of instructions and some ideas on how to set the machine up for bends. But um, the other thing is this, this tube coming up was very thin. I was surprised when I drilled through it. Uh, it maybe in a sixteenth of an inch, maybe thicker, but it doesn't seem to affect its strength. So it it seems to be a good machine, and I'll probably get a lot of use out of it. And I plan to make some additional uh, accessories and dies for this machine. So if you're interested in seeing more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, leave comments, give me a thumbs up. And I'll try to reply to any comments you have on any of my videos. Thanks for watching.